Welcome back everyone. We move on to the last session of the day which is cracking the code to employee experience. The cost of employee disengagement is estimated to be at 70 million dollars annually which is an absolutely huge number. Now employee experience is all about helping employees succeed and achieving business objectives at the very same time. Learn from experts the art of designing an effective employee experience and cracking the code of delivering a distinct employee experience. And to present this session, it's my pleasure to uh, invite Emmanuel Michael, Head of People Experience, Lesse Ho MFP. In his current role, Emmanuel aims to build the capacity of business leaders to create great employee experiences that would translate into delivery of our business objectives. Thank you so much for joining us, Emmanuel. It's our, it's, it's completely our pleasure, and uh, I hand over the stage to you, the virtual stage to you, basically. Over to you, Emmanuel. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Ruby. Uh, good morning. Good afternoon. And uh, I'm sure it's evening in some location. Uh, so today, just like Ruby has uh, explained, we will be. Uh, we will be uh, reviewing how to crack the code for employee uh, experience. Uh, so uh, let me share my screen. I'm just trying to share the screen. And then we can begin uh, properly. Just a moment. OK, fine. Uh, so like I said, we'll be looking at cracking the code to employee experience. If you look at why do, why is employee experience really important to organizations? Uh, there have been several research conducted by different organizations across the globe, which has shown that sometime in 2017, a research conducted by Deloitte showed that nearly 80% uh, of executives rated employee experience as very important and, uh, to their business. Uh, why is this important? You discover that the way you treat your employees somehow translates into the way they also treat uh, your customers. And as a result, it affects productivity. And when productivity is affected, uh, positively or negatively, it affects the fortune of uh, the, the business. Candidates also, uh, when you have a very good employee experience in an organization, what it does is to ensure that they, if you have candidates who are being hired and they get a very good experience, at the end of the day, uh, what happens is they become ambassadors for your uh, establishment. Uh, we've also seen that uh, in terms of the employee life cycle, which we are going to review in the subsequent slides, there are different things that you need to do to ensure that uh, people who come through your, uh, up, on, up until the time they are in with you and then eventually they leave the organization, that they get a very good experience. Uh, this is key in the sense that the way you get to treat them will determine what sort of message they will give out there, uh, how the people will refer to your company, how they will see your company, what sort of image uh, your company is going to have out there. Uh, so I'm going to take us through the employee life cycle. So walk us through what exactly do we need to do to ensure that uh, we're able to give out the type of experience that will enable our organization to become a great place to work or the employer of choice. There are six stages in the employee life cycle and I'm going to walk us through each of these stages uh, the first one we're going to look at is attraction. What exactly do you need to do with regard uh, to attraction? In order to attract the right kind of uh, employee or candidates that will work for you, you need to ensure, uh, one, that you are well-known. Uh, being well-known in the industry, being well-known in the community or in the country where you operate is very critical. Getting the right candidates that will be productive for your establishment, that will be able to give you the kind of numbers you're looking for, will depend on the quality of candidates that are able to 
attract. Now, how do you become well known? Uh, there's need for you uh, as a company to invest in your managers, to be able to go out there, uh, maybe invest in them to attend seminars where you'll be able to showcase your, uh, your company. And aside from that, the second thing that is also key uh, is that there is need for you to be able to tell the world about the great work culture that you have. Uh, you can do this through either sharing, using social media, uh, the LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter, you share the experience. Some also use Instagram to share what sort of work culture that you have in your organization. And when you share this, there are people who will, this will resonate with and uh, attract them to your, to your company. Then the other thing in terms of attraction that will bring the kind of quality of uh, candidates that you need for your organization is offering attractive compensations and benefits. We're not saying you need to pay something huge, uh, but you need to ensure that uh, whatever it is that you're giving is such that can attract the right kind of uh, candidate that you need for your, uh, for your company. Now, looking at the second uh, employee life cycle, which talks about recruitment, is basically what it is, is recruitment. Um, recruiting uh, people, what sort of experience do they get through? Those who have applied, when you invite them for interview, do you keep them waiting forever out there, uh, not being attended to? Uh, you fix an, an interview appointment for a scheduled time. The candidate get there. They have to wait for hours and hours uh, before you attend to them. That will send negative uh, signal that this kind of this organization is not one that is uh, very serious. And so you don't take them serious, you get there. If the, ex the, the experience that the candidate is getting is that upon in the place, how do you get them uh, on, on board? So basically the experience that people go through in terms of application, interview, up until when they are selected is very key. Uh, you need to watch exactly what you do. Now coming to onboarding, what do you do? with onboarding. There are five major things I think you need to do with regard to uh, onboarding. One, uh, you need to have a pre-boarding package. You need to have a pre-boarding package. What exactly do you send to the candidates before they resume? So before they resume, there is need to ensure that they need to ensure that uh, one uh, the candidates like kept addressed uh, during as they went they resume at work, and then what sort of experiences? would you want this candidate to go through on day one? So you need to have a list of things that you want them. You need to ensure that they have a flawless to uh, meet with their managers. Um, and then also, they should be able to uh, know exactly what they need to do. You know, not such that by the time the person gets into the job, he or she is very clear. The onboarding experience should be comprehensive, such that the person should be very clear. So, so that the person should be very clear uh, on what is expected of them throughout uh, their journey with this particular uh, organization. So aside from the first day experience, what you want them to do, you need to also have a schedule uh, of what will happen in the first month. What are the first month essentials? Uh, itemize specifically what this employee is going to go through within the first month. Uh, aside from first month, you can also have some programs, things that will happen at the end of each quarter, at the end of 12 months, and then you put in uh, a measure where you can evaluate the person's experience. Okay, what is the first day experience at work? What is the one week experience at work? At the end of each month, what sort of experience are they going through? The feedback that you gather from this exercise 
will enable you to fine tune your onboarding uh, experience. So at the end of the day, what you want to ensure is that this employee has a very good experience and that you are succeeding in getting the right people uh, into uh, your workspace. Now, in terms of uh, development, what sort of experience are we giving our employees with regard to development? This has to be a win-win. If we take the discussion that has taken place yesterday and today, uh, everyone was talking about what is going to happen on the future of work, uh, the, uh, in terms of the disruption they were going to be expecting or to see at the workplace. So what plans do you have? They need to have a conversation around the employee's development. So you need to show care in the employee's development so that he or she is ready for what is going to happen, for the disruption that is coming uh, tomorrow. So we need to encourage uh, learning, you know, continuous learning. And then for those who take it upon themselves to invest in their learning, there's need for the company also to put in place a method or a mechanism for rewarding uh, these employees. Now, looking at uh, retention, so what do you do with regard to retention? The first thing is if we hire the right person, then it means that we'll be able to retain them. So retention will only succeed when we're able to identify and hire the right uh, person. Then the next thing, uh, there's need for us to build relationships with our employees. You know, when we hire people, we don't just let them be on their own and then they are lost. So we need to build a, a, a great relationship, you know, between the employee and the team. So when that relationship is active, uh, it will enable us to retain uh, this employee. Then the third thing that I think uh, we can also do to improve retention experience is that there should be open communications between the teams. Okay, about what is the mission of the organization, what is the mission of the team, what are our aspirations, conversation needs to keep going on around these particular areas. And then fourthly, uh, they need to seek feedback from the employee uh, in order to understand what is it that you need to do that will enable you uh, to keep them uh, instead of them leaving uh, the scene. And, uh, we also need to understand what is it that motivates this employee, okay? Uh, when you start doing all this, it shows care, you know, the employee says that, okay, I'm being cared for. Uh, this, my manager is concerned about me. Uh, he wants, he or she wants to know exactly what is going on with me. Uh, this one way or the other will contribute to uh, retaining this particular employee. Then uh, the last stage of the employee uh, life cycle has to do with separation. Yes, anything that has uh, a beginning always has an end. Uh, and so we need to ensure that when people separate from us, we do not let them go out uh, feeling bad. So even if they are being terminated or dismissed from work, uh, we need to ensure that they live with a very good experience because those who leave us eventually become ambassadors. They'll be able to say things about us out there uh, in the community. So we want a situation whereby, <coughs> excuse me, situation whereby when they go out there, they become good ambassadors and they're able to say nice things, which will attract a goodwill uh, to the company. So this uh, basically some of the things that I think we need to do with regard to improving uh, employee experience uh, using the employee life uh, cycle. Then in closing, uh, for me, uh, what I believe is that employee experience will differentiate the employer of the future. So for companies that invest in the experiences that their employees go through, you know, this will enable them, one, increase productivity. And because they're increasing productivity, it will attract more fortune to uh, the organization. And when it attracts more fortune, definitely you know what it is. Uh, everyone will be happy. So it's a win, win, win uh, for the organization, for the employee, and for the customer that is being uh, served. And then the owners of the business are also excited 
uh, with the outcome of uh, uh, the, the income that comes to the, to the company. So in a nutshell, this is basically some of the things that I have uh, for us. Uh, so I will be taking your questions. And uh, as we go through the questions, uh, if we're not able to take all, feel free to connect with me uh, on my social media handles, and then we can take the conversation forward. So thank you, Ruby. Uh, I hope thank you're you. still there. Yes, I'm there, Emmanuel. Thank you so very much. I'll uh, pick up some of the questions, though there are many, but we'll, uh, we'll, we'll be able to only entertain a few. So uh, the question comes from one of our attendees and it says, uh, could you share some success stories from your own business context on onboarding? And what did you do to excite your incoming candidates? Okay, so uh, one of the things that I did in my own onboarding is uh, before the employee resumes at work, uh, usually uh, some of the challenges that we had before was when people come uh, on the day one, they have challenge with maybe the ID is not ready, their business cards are not ready, the emails are not ready, so we need to start setting that up. Uh, so, but what we did was to transform that to ensure that as soon as the person has accepted the offer, a month to the time the person is expected to resume, we ensure that all these items are tested, and then we have a platform where one can actually learn about the company uh, on our extranet, uh, which gives you some video. So we share that link with you, and you're able to know more about the company, the job, uh, the structure, the career path. Uh, so that on the day that you resume, you only just come up with a list of questions you want to ask, and then that is addressed. So it makes the person uh, to get to know the company even before he or she uh, resumes on day one. So this is one of the things that we've uh, implemented. Thank you, thank you, Manuel. The next question says, uh, from retention to separation, what are things uh, one HR should uh, do uh, to make it a smooth transition from retention to separation? Okay, so from retention to separation, one of the things I think uh, HR should do uh, is uh, when there is need for you to separate from a particular employee. Uh, I usually give example that when I terminate someone from work, they usually come back to thank me for giving them that opportunity uh, or to let them go, you know? And so what has happened is that uh, you make that experience very stress-free uh, because they are no longer required in this place does not mean that they are not very, they are not good, okay? Uh, the challenge may be that they are not a perfect fit for this particular institution. So that conversation needs to go on. There is need to provide adequate counseling where you are actually exiting uh, someone from a place of work because when you exit someone, uh, you're actually taking away food from their mouth and so they don't feel very excited. So when you try to push on that by giving them appropriate counseling, uh, even making uh, them assured that should they require any reference, you, are, you will be there to provide uh, some sort of reference, you know? Uh, so give the, giving them assurance that out there, okay, one door closes, another door is about to open, you know? Uh, so, so that they have some hope. Yes, I'm living here, but they have hope that something good is going to happen out there. So that's basically what I would advise. Superb. Uh, one last question. I think we still have time for one last question. And uh, the question is on uh, how do we achieve retention uh, without salary increment? Very interesting question. Yes. So uh, retention is not always about money. So that's one thing we need to know. It's not always about money. Uh, if you check uh, an organization, uh, for an employee who is engaged or highly engaged, what is that employee looking for? There are basic needs. Our basic needs are in terms of work tools. Do you, does he or she have the work tool that they need to be able to uh, carry out their job? If you fulfill that work tool, that basic need uh, for them, you will be able to retain them. Then employees are interested in growth. What sort of growth plans do you have for me? Uh, is this an organization where I'll be able to grow? You know, If they are aware that they can grow in this organization, 
then they will want to stay. Then the other thing is uh, in terms of, uh, do I really belong here? You know, uh, my voice, does it count? Uh, if I bring an opinion, is, do, do we consider my voice? Uh, so that is one of, some, some other thing that we can do without necessarily uh, spending uh, money. Their recognition is also, recognition, simple things as thank you for a job well done. Okay, so if we're able to do these four things, you will be able to keep people, not necessarily by giving them money, but by doing these four things that I've just listed. Thank you so much, Emmanuel. Uh, I'm sure there are many more questions that the audience has and would love to ask you. Uh, we request you to uh, uh, you know, navigate towards the networking mm -hmm. zone where you can okay. pick up more questions and engage with the audience and uh, answer more questions, basically. I request the audience okay. also to move to the networking zone after the session is over. And uh, yes, Emmanuel, uh, thank you so very much for being here. Uh, your session was absolutely uh, the best way to end the day. We wouldn't have found a better way to end the day, basically. Thank you. Uh, because it all boils down to how important it is for us uh, to take care of our talent and how technology can enable us in doing so and how this entire space is evolving. That's what Talent Tech Evolve is all about. And you very beautifully uh, you know, helped us uh, conclude day two of uh, Talent Tech Evolve. So thank, thank you so much, Emmanuel. It's been a pleasure hosting you and we look forward to many more interactions with you. Thank, thank you so much. Thank and you. before thank we you. move on, everyone, um, uh, we would uh, love, you know, we would want you to note down the secret code for this session, which is hashtag EMP EXP. So that's short form for employee experience. That's EMP EXP 1515. So uh, this brings us to the end of day two of Talent Tech Evolve. Thank you so much uh, for being part of this journey with us. We look forward to seeing you tomorrow. Same time, same place. Till then, have a great time and thank you once again. Keep learning. Thank you.